our residents of uh, our unit. I'm a local boy. I grew up in what the Chuchu called Tung, which is not very far from, from here. If you want to know where it is now, you know the Northeast Line MRT Depot. That was where I used to live. I helped my parents to grow vegetables. And every morning, 4.30 a.m., we all had to get up, gather, uh, harvest the vegetables, so that my father can bring them to the market at Simon Road. It's no more there, but it's where the Coven MRT station is. All our neighbors, all our friends were like us, all poor. What we earn for the day, what my father sold in the market for that day, is the money we had to spend. If we had nothing to sell, we had no money to spend. That was what life was 50, 60 years ago. But we were fortunate. We had a PAP government. And under the leadership of the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, Dr. Goh Keng Sui, Mr. Rajaratnam, Yusof Ishak, Ibrahim, Yohman Wok, together with the people, we built Singapore. And this year, we celebrated SG-15. But you know, I went to school, it was about three or four kilometers. How did I go to school? Walk. Walk three, four kilometers to school, walk three, four kilo kilometers back. If you got time, I got a lot of stories to tell about my young days. But my friends were the same. And those who took the bus, old timers here will know there was a yellow bus called Mungo Bus Service. And if you took the bus, the wait for a bus is anything between 20 minutes or more, usually half an hour. So MLT two minutes don't complain, huh? And in the morning, when the buses came, they were usually packed to the brim. So what do you do? If, the, if it is full, you don't wait for the next bus. You jump on the bus. One foot on the step, the other foot on the bar by the door. Or you hang on to the window. Your other foot hang out. Of course, today you do that, huh? the police will come after you. So, a lot has changed. Maybe our MLT system, our bus service is not to everybody's satisfaction. But I think not so bad lah, compared to what it was, right? Yeah. So we all grew up. We got better jobs. And our lives have got better. We live in better homes, HDB flats, condos, private property. Now, will our lives be better going forward? For our children and our grandchildren, what kind of life will they have? We want them to have a better life than ourselves. But we live in a very challenging world. There are wars going on elsewhere in the world. 
And in, even in our own neighborhood, sometimes the tensions flare. You know about the South China Sea problems between the different countries claiming for the same pieces of uh, island. Anything can happen. So how do we ensure that we stay safe? I think better we have a strong SAF and we train our NS men properly.
many upsets over the years. The last week alone, you see the stock market go plunging down. I hope you didn't play stocks. Huh? But it shows how difficult the world economy is. And we are growing slower, not just because our wages are higher, but because of slowdowns elsewhere. They slow down in China, and then when there are problems in our neighboring countries, they also slow down, and that affects us. So, some people are very happy today, go to Johor, right? One Singapore dollar, three ringgit, you buy a lot of things. But it is not something that we are too happy about. Because how it will affect Singapore, how it will affect jobs in Singapore. And that is what our leaders have to worry about every day. And at the same time, there are huge changes brought about by technology. For example, today many young people, many young people here, Now you buy, you buy things on the internet, right? And they get delivered to you, to your house. And where do they come from? From as far away as the United States, Europe. So our shops are filling it, Ottero is filling it. And jobs will change very quickly. Something which the other political parties are not discussing. But we have to discuss this because it's about our future and your future, your children's future. Now, jobs will change very quickly because of technology. And let me give you an example. You know there are taxis, right? But our young people today when you want to call a taxi, they don't call Comfort or SMRT or what have you. They call Grab Taxi, yes, or Uber. Now, this is affecting the lives of our taxi drivers. And of course, we have to be worried about what is going to happen to them. And somebody has got to take care of them when these kind of things change. So far, I have not heard any other political party talking about the problems that our people will face and our taxi drivers are facing. And you know, we live in a very competitive world and in the area of technology, who do you think are more advanced in the use of technology? Of course, you say you're United States. But today, China is more advanced in the use of technology than many countries, including in some areas, including the United States. So in the past, we say Chinese people come and learn from Singapore. Now, we have to go to China to learn what is happening, how it will impact on us, how it will impact on the jobs that we have. So, next Friday, what are you doing on next Friday? You are voting for the government. You are voting for a government that will take us through the next five years. I assure you, there are young people coming out, standing for elections. PM will appoint some of them as ministers. At the end of five years, you take the photo today, huh? take the photo today, and five years later, you take the photo of them again and compare. A lot of white hair. <laughs> Worrying for you.
Uh, what kind of what kind of candidates do we need to have? We need people who are capable, who can help the prime minister solve these problems. So you know, in the past, we had problems. One example: water. We had depended on Malaysia for almost all our water. Then they say, when they're not happy with us, they will cut off the supply. You know what happens when we got no water supply? We die of thirst. But we have leaders who worried about that every day. And then we solve the problem. We have new water. We recycle every drop of water. So we can use it two times, like three times, and so on. And we can be independent in our water supply. So the grey hair that Mr. Lee Kuan Yew had, the grey hair that Mr. Go Chot Long has, the grey hair that Mr. Lee Sin Lung has today, it's all for you. So your vote next Friday is important. Send the right people to parliament. Just now, I said in Teochew, or what I think is Teochew, not, not, not pure, but uh, I think can do. I already explained our candidates, so I will not repeat. But some people still ask the question, why no heavyweights? I'm not referring to trying down, I'm not because that kind of thing. Well, among the five, I don't want to talk about all five. Among the five, we have one lawyer, Murali. And you know, he works for one of the big law firms in Singapore called Raja and Tan. He heads the litigation department, so go to court and argue. Huh? And 100 lawyers report to him. On the other side, there are also lawyers, right? There is at least three of them. So you ask them, when you see them, they come round and ask for your vote. How many lawyers report to you? Can they compare with Mulali? So voters of our unit, we have a good team here. Next Friday, give them your vote. Bring them home to our unit.